So I'd say we start. Hello, everyone. I'm Peter. I'm in Zurich. Um, welcome to the Plone 6 Classic UI theming. Uh, we will be doing uh, three slots, uh, each of them about one hour. There's a short break in between. And I hope you could uh, prepare yourself or your computer and that it works. If you have any questions, uh, write in the Slack channel or just speak up uh, here on Zoom. So, um, I will cover one small part quickly, and that's the through the web customizations. Um, in Plone, you always could uh, do some uh, through the web customization, like adding, changing the logo and stuff like that. And with uh, Plone 6, some things change. So I'll start up my site quickly. So one thing which you probably know is how to change the logo. I won't go into much detail here. It's a simple form. Uh, you add the logo and it will be displayed uh, automatically. Uh, there is one other pull request to also change the favicon, but that wasn't merged yet. Merged yet. So the big new thing uh, is we have now with Bootstrap 5, um, the possibility of uh, custom CSS variables. Um, we introduced uh, with uh, Plon 5.2 version uh, the possibility to add uh, your custom style sheets again. Maybe you remember that from uh, Plon 4. Uh, otherwise, I'll quickly show you how that works. So you go to your plan site, set it up to the theming control panel. There we have already a theme installed, but it doesn't matter now. You go to advanced settings and within custom styles, you have a, a simple field where you can add your CSS that you wanna to add to your site without uh, theming anything in your plan site. Just enter the your styles here, and you already see that the uh, heading one has a different color. If we go back to the plan side, you see document first heading uh, got that color. But with Bootstrap five, um, we got um, the CSS variables, so. It, this makes possible to change a lot of stuff uh, visually uh, in your theme or in your site without creating a theme, without compiling any styles. So just to give you an idea uh, or an overview first, um, this is the link to the series CSS variables that are available now. These are defined by Bootstrap and we are using them as well. So you can pick one of these uh, variables and just add it to your CSS. So instead of header, just color red. I define my variables here in, the, in this root definition. I have here my green, uh, and uh, my orange, and I use the my green for the heading, and also um, the orange for the body text color. What I'm all you also using here is a standard bootstrap variable. And if I go to save here, you see that I changed the background change the heading color to the variable name and also the standard text is now my orange. Let's 
So yeah, and to mention, um, there's just uh, some variables. Uh, I think these variables will uh, will grow with the development of Bootstrap and uh, with uh, what we do in Barcelona in the future. So let's head over to uh, how to create a theme based on Barceloneta. So we are going to create a theme on the file system. We'll be using the recommended way to make your life easier. That's based on uh, Plon CLI. Um, now for the Plon 6, we created three new templates. Uh, one is for creating a theme based on Barcelona, which we'll be doing now. Uh, and the other tools are covered by Stefan and Mike later. So we quickly create a new Python package. You can enter whatever you want here. Just going with the defaults. So we have now uh, my addon.name package. Just enter this package. And then what we do here is we create our clone theme. So within the, you change into the package and add a theme. You can also do a clone CLI minus L and you see all the templates that you have available. So let's add a theme based on Barcelona um, We will, um recreate the plone theme gritty busy that i created for this uh, showcase or training so i just give it a name and it's added here to run plone the first time or to get all the dependencies you do a plone cli build This will run build out for you, get all the stuff you need to run a plone site. And meanwhile, uh, I can show you what was created here. Uh, within your package, in the namespace, there was a theme folder created. We now have the basic files here uh, that we need for our theme. To start my site, I just run plone CLI surf. And if I go to this address, I have a plain uh, plone instance running, but no site yet. So we just add plone site. So this is your plone site running. Then we go to the site setup to our plone control panel, go to the add-ons. And here you see I have this add-on here. And if I install it, I already have some kind of coloring here. These are just uh, default styles. So, to get started with your plone theming, I also already skipped this part. Um, you leave the plone site running, you just create a new terminal. There you go into the package and then into the theme folder.
So here in the package, we have the package JSON file that defines all the dependencies, what you need to make your own theme. And from here, you just run an npm install and npm will get the stuff uh, dependencies what you need to work on your theme. What we also included here is a watch script. So this will compile your scss file, which is in the styles folder, to the actual uh, theme SSS that you will be using later. So, so if you run npm with the watch command, it will read the SCSS file and create the CSS file for you. So if you go here and do a refresh, maybe a shift refresh, uh, the boilerplate CSS is gone. So we can start with uh, styling our own theme. As I said, uh, we are recreating the Gritty Busy, but you can make your theme uh, as ever, however you want it. Uh, it's always good for a theme or the, the most important part uh, or the, what gives you guidelines how the theme should like is the logo. So we just add the logo as I showed you before. Go to the here, select your logo and press save. We have now an idea of uh, what colors we'll be using. And uh, we will start by adding those variables. Uh, to say uh, Bootstrap has really a lot of variables, and I can't stress it enough. Um, you can change almost every aspect in your theme just by changing variables. In the beginning, there are the color variables, the base variables, and here it comes the, the important part. Uh, where you will be filling in your uh, color values then. So we will be adding uh, some colors. It's important that we add those colors before we do the import on uh, Barcelona or Bootstrap, because the, the, the way SCSS works is that you have to find it before uh, uh, your imports that the uh, imported files can work with. So if I save, I, the, the watcher compiles the files again, and we should see some color changes already. So to make this really a kitten theme, we will be changing more variables. One um, beside the, the specific variables, we have overall variables that we can uh, use to change our theme. Um, these are variables or properties like uh, rounded, shaded, uh, shadows and others. In case of um, 
Barcelona, we already have a little bit of rounded corners, but for this seam, we want to make them more rounded. But, uh, I, for completeness, I add the uh, property enable rounded, but set the border radius for almost everything to one REM. So if I wait for the stars to compile, if I press refresh, you see the most of the borders now got more rounded than before. So let's change some more variables. We are changing the background of the body and the background of the of the breadcrumbs. So this is where these again are variables from Bootstrap that I add here. I'm reusing my defined color from above. Press save. And it got even more pink. So most of the stuff uh, you will be doing in CSS, but some things like basic um, basic uh, structure uh, of your theme uh, is in the index HTML. And for some parts, it's easier to just add classes here. This is the index HTML that will be um, that is our the base for our theme. But what we want to achieve is we want to make the breadcrumbs, uh, the navigation and the breadcrumbs not going to the full width. So we add this container class. This also comes from uh, Bootstrap and uh, is part of the grid system of Bootstrap. I'll add this to the main navigation wrapper and to the above content wrapper. Just save it. And you will see that now we have the navigation as well aligned to the content here. Uh, put a link into the bootstrap grid system if you have, want to have more information. Yeah, once I know this, um, don't change too much in the index HTML uh, if you start. Uh, very important are the IDs. Uh, the rules XML is the file that will put your content from your clone site and replace it in the theme file here. Fonts are another important part in your site or in your theme. So um, I've selected uh, two fonts from uh, Google Fonts. We'll just add it here. So we import the fonts. Still above the other imports. And I will change uh, two other bootstrap variables to make the things active or visible. So you see, we changed the heading font and we also changed the overall base font to a different font. Um, if, wanna, if you want to use the fonts uh, or want to see the fonts uh, within the times, tiny MC editor as well, uh, you should go for the input version. Um, alternatively, the, you can put it in the HTML as well. 
um, to prevent some kind of font loading side effects, it's maybe a good idea to uh, add these pre-connect um, tags, uh, no matter if you import the font itself in the HTML as well or in the CSS. So to make these uh, fonts that we put in here uh, a little bit more obvious or visible, um, we add um, some more, we, we color the, the font. just another set of variables. Uh, this will be the size of the body text and this will be the headings color. So the heading color is now also the primary color that goes all through the theme also used for the link color. There are extra variables to uh, change the link, link uh, color separately, but for now we just stay with the primary color. Then we also have variables for all kinds of font sizes. make the h1 and h2 a little bit bigger so h1 and h2 this is what it should look now so this is just an short view on what you can do with variables, but you can change almost every aspect of the look uh, within Plone with this. So we saw we changed the primary colors, the fonts, uh, also around the corners. And this is also true for the edit forms. So you see here also the uh, input fields around it now. We have the fonts in here, also styled. And Bootstrap allows you to change very, very detailed aspects of your theme based on uh, with, with variables. So to complete or um, improve our theme. The border of the navigation is still a bit pointy. So here I add some styles, especially or specifically for those uh, uh, input forms of the live search, for example. Let's do this. So I search for the selector, add the class. And now it's important after the imports, you add your own styles. And here you also have um, access to all the bootstrap mixins and utilities. They are here, you can just use them as you like. Uh, too early. Okay, shift reload helped. So now we have a connecting input box 
to the um, button for the search. Let's head over to the navigation and breadcrumbs. So we set the border radius for the nav bar and in the plone, uh, for the breadcrumbs, we also changed the border radius down here. So if you go here, we now have the navigation nicely rounded. And there's one more thing that I want to change. Um, now the the header was was done in with flex, and we are able to move the contents inside that flex box. So I take the ID portal header say align items to the end of the box. And if I do a refresh, it's nicely aligned on the un underside with the logo. So that's basically it for a simple theme based on Barceloneta. Um, I haven't covered CSS variables here very much because it's still developing, but you can change uh, CSS variables in, within your theme as well. Um, since the browser interprets this directly, uh, it's a good idea to put it just to the end, uh, similar as the through the web uh, customization would be. Just add it here and it should work. So that's basically it from the Barcelona uh, perspective. Um, maybe in, as an explanation, we created with the new Barcelona theme an NPM package, which will include and uh, you just can extend from that. We have um, two files, just for explanation. We have an import of uh, Barcelona SCSS that includes all of Bootstrap plus the Barcelona or, or Plone specific components like the navigation uh, or, or other small elements that we use in Plone. If you don't use any of the components from Plon, but just want uh, a clean start and, and working UI, you can also uh, include a base SCSS. There you only have the styles included to make the uh, uh, edit forms and, and other stuff work. And you can start on top of that. No, Stefan, did I miss something or are there any questions about the contents? I didn't see any questions in the chat. Um, feel free to ask. Or I would say we make a short break, like two, three minutes and then proceed with the next chapter.
Yeah, I can't, maybe as a, a closing word, I can't stress enough to get familiar with all the bootstrap variables because it makes your theming life so easy. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed working with it uh, or doing themes based on that. Yeah, so, so maybe a question for me, for Maurits. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete, do you do you use this approach uh, the most for your clients? Yes. Work? Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, I like to have everything within the same look and feel. I don't um, make a difference between locked in and or or normal users and editing users um, because just works and it's so much easier um yeah that's what i do in 95 percent of my theming work it's just basing as a basing my theme or also the site on the functionality of plan that i already have uh, also if you use those variables all the views, templates uh, of, of add-ons will be almost automatically styled if they are updated to the Plone 6 and um, Bootstrap 5 markup. So one, one part to make this happen is in Plone 6, we really refactored or updated all our Plone core markup to bootstrap compatible markup and yeah this so you create you to change your variables and everything within your plone site will follow those variables so almost no extra styling for whatever you want to do just use the bootstrap components and that will make your life quite easy Any other questions? Okay, then I say thank you. Uh, let's do a break till um, 45. And then Stefan will start um, showing you how to theme Plone from scratch without using any of the Barcelona specific parts.
Ich wollte gerade sagen, Mike, du bist heute so schlank. Aber ich kann dich nicht hören. How's it now? Jetzt höre ich dich leise. Ja, ja, ja. Wird besser. Ja. Seems to auto adjust doesn't work with Zoom in my microphone, but now it's okay. I can hear you. No, it's okay. Perfect. Okay, let's start with the next part. Um, quick check, Mike, you can hear me, everything fine. Screen is visible. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thanks. So let's uh, proceed with the next uh, step or next chapter in the seeming training. Um, we are going to create a seam from scratch which is similar to the approach uh, Peter showed already, but small details are a little bit different and gives you more or less better or worse options, however you see it afterwards. Um, the seam is built from scratch, which that means there is no dependency to a Barceloneta or to Barceloneta styling somehow. Um, the only thing you need is bootstrap. So basic, basically you have everything bootstrap ships and uh, on top of that, we have the markup from Plone which fits to Bootstrap now, which gives us a good starting point to create a custom theme, uh, a custom UI, or if you think in a micro application and stuff like that, um, you yeah, have, have a clean starting point and you have full, full control over whatever you want to do. Um, the documentation is um, available. The links are, I guess, posted or we, we sent out an email just before the training. Uh, have a look at the, at the documentation. Give us feedback if we miss something or if you think something um, should go in there, um, let us know so we can help you. Most of the stuff I do on the console is done with Plone CLI. Um, ask Mike after my session, he is um, a good, person to ask questions about Plone CLI and what you can do or what you not can do with, with this thing. 
I proceed requirements. Uh, I guess uh, who tries to follow the training also already made some steps that are required for my part as well. So I will skip that and we just start creating a new theme here. As mentioned in the documentation, you are getting asked some questions. Uh, for now, I will proceed with defaults. They are OK. Um, the amount of questions is different based on if you have configuration files on your system that answers, for example, who is the author or um, your email address or stuff. Um, it's taken from a configuration file. And um, if you miss a question, check the configuration file. So. The file structure has been generated, as we see in the console output. Then we are adding a theme to the actual package. Quick explanation, we created a package that is called plonetheme.tokyo. It is at this point basically an add-on for plone without any functionality. There is no content type in, there are no new, almost no templates in, it's just an empty package. And we start adding a theme with plone CLI. Okay, you have to step in the package. Good point here. Um, some commands of Plone CLI for create are for creating packages. Some stuff adds templates or views or stuff to an existing package. For that, you have to be inside the package already. That was the mistake I made here. So it adds theme basic. Theme basic is a Bob template. Um, it's basically a bunch of folders, files, configuration files that are put into our actual package. And we replace some variables here, for example, the theme name. You can go with your own values. And at the end, uh, Plone CLI asks me to create a repository or add my stuff to the local Git repository. This is more, more uh, a security step if you make a mistake or if you want to revert stuff to go to a few lines before, this gives you the option later. So it's always good to do that and answer with yes at that point. Again, file structure created. So we have the seam in. Next is to create or run the build out. The whole build process is covered by Plone CLI build. Um, you see the green output on my screen. We, I've documented that in the seeming documentation as well. It shows what actual command is fired on the console. Um, basically, a virtual environment is created. Uh, the requirements with our install with pip install. The build out is bootstrapped and an actual build out runs in the background here. Um, I build out, we know we have now some minutes to talk a little bit. Um, I like the um, I like to do the steps manually at some point for the training. Plone CLI is a good start. Um, whatever you prefer. If you run into an error here, if there are dependency issues, you will get output on the console and uh, the process stops. If everything is uh, works as expected, we finish with a line that says everything is done. For me, the generated stuff, or uh, as far there is no error, everything is created and we can start now. Here I recommend using a code editor, um, a development kit somehow. Uh, in my example, I will use Visual Studio Code. It's open source, you can download it and use it. Um, just We are already inside the package, so you can just uh, open it by code dot on a Linux-based system like Mac. It opens the, the code editor. We are inside Plone Seam Tokyo package. Seam has been added already. I get some errors here. I just ignore them. The editor recognizes virtual environments, Python environment stuff. I'm not an expert answering that. I ignore it or reload the window when the editor wants to reload. That helps a little bit. So. I guess I have to look up here quickly. I guess the next step is to start up the instance and I recommend doing this inside the code editor. 
So I open a terminal, new terminal, gives me basically a, a shell in here where you can do the same like you do in a separate window, but you keep everything together in one um, editor window and you keep track of different running processes and commands. So bin instance foreground starts up the Zop application server. This is my firewall here. I have to allow connections for that. And as mentioned in the documentation, um, it shows you the application server is serving on local host port 8080. This is configured in your build out configuration. Uh, there is documentation about build out, how to change that. There is, build, uh, there is documentation if you want to run that on a production system. This is not covered by that talk or by that training. I opened it up in my um, Chrome. Um, when you have a new uh, window, I quickly show it with Firefox here. I did this already before, that's why I can show it. If you go to the application server, you will be asked for username and password. Both is admin, admin, and it's documented in the build out configuration. So there are your login credentials. Normally you will get this ask after the first step out, uh, start up, I am already here. And I look to the, if I look to the Zop management interface, it looks like that. This is a good um, sign. Everything is built, everything is up and running. Everything works as expected. I removed the last part to go to the root. This screen you have already seen from Peter. We do a little thing a little bit different now. We open the advanced tab. Then you have a little bit more information. You can directly install add-ons with your package directly. I do this for Plone Sim Tokyo and click on create plone site. This installs a plone site and installs the selected package in one go. Okay, so we have a little bit here to see. Let's check out the documentation quickly. Okay, um, what we see here is Plone up and running. We see the edit bar and we see it's not completely broken because the Plone markup fits to Bootstrap. That's why we get some basic styling, including colors and stuff. I will explain that a little bit later. Um, the first step we do with the new setup is we add some columns. Clone always works with some columns. We don't have any CSS or any um, styling active, so we have to do that. Uh, we have to cover that part manually. Um, this is an example for overrides. Um, we override the main template. I explain a little bit more about overrides later on, but let's start with that to have it in place and we can touch it later on. Okay, uh, this build setup brings you a parts folder. This is where all the original or the, the core stuff is located. That's, that's the packages basically you download it in a, um, in a very special um, orientation. And here inside the, the omelet folder, you see all the original packages. So when you copy over a template from Plone app content types, where the content type templates list in, or Plone app layout, where lots of viewlets are located in, um, I recommend not download it from somewhere. You can use the master branch from, from GitHub, but I recommend always copy the template from here, from your local setup, because this is the exact version of Plone you're run, running at the moment when you develop the stuff. The main template is under products, CMF Plone, browser, templates. Here we have two templates we have to copy over. It's the Ajax main template and also the main template, which we have here. So I copy the files, scroll down to my package and copy to the source folder I documented in the documentation. Create a new folder for that and paste it in there. They're new. 
Um, the VS Code sees it's a new file. When you do the diff view or the source control tab, you see that there are two files I've created. That's the only difference that is not committed at that point of time. Okay, in the documentation, um, this is covered by this uh, lines here. I added in the full path so you can see where I copied it to what location I actually copied it. Now we have to register the template. That's done in the configure part in the configure CCML. Let's paste it in. Save the file, go over it. And the last thing we have to copy is the main template PY. Again, scroll up to the original part. It's not inside template, it's directly in the browser folder. There is our main template PY. In Plone 4, it was just a template that has been changed later. I'm not an expert, but here are some macro definitions that addressing an issue with recursion errors. Um, if you know to fix this, let us know. Okay. We have added uh, a bunch of uh, files, especially we touched configuration CCML. I always recommend to restart the instance. Um, there are tools like Plone Reload for Python files or as well configurations, but um, in at the time where we have SSDs in our systems, restarting a SOAP instance doesn't take that much time. If you restart the instance and it comes up as expected, it's always a good point you didn't break anything. So at this point, I go to the start page, I reload and I see nothing changed as expected. I can, I'm not sure if it works or if it, if it doesn't work, the only thing I can do is just add some characters. It's HTML, so we don't break anything. If I add something here and if I reload, um, you will directly see the result in the template. So this means the, the template registration we have in our package now just works as expected. Good, let's uh, have a look at the documentation. I cover one chapter with conflicts that says, if you register a template that is already there under its name, like we have it with the main template, I'm talking about this part here. Um, if you do this and the name main template is already taken in Plone, you get a conflict error. You can avoid this by adding a seam layer. The seam layer is registered or is created in your seam and at the, or when you activate, when you install the package, this layer is activated as well. If you uninstall the Plone package, the layer has no effect. That's uh, an option to have different packages be touching more or less the same templates or the same parts of Plone without conflicting. So that's the, the hint here, explained under conflicts in the documentation. Okay. Um, we are not uh, built our seam on top of Barceloneta, so we have to take care about some stuff. One stuff is columns. The main template uh, doesn't care about columns um, by default. They are added with uh, CSS, with a mix-in in the in the in the Barceloneta seam. I can show you that later. That's also an option of adding columns. Um, I like the idea of having full, full control over the main template. So um, I just copy the file, paste it in to the main template PT, save it and give us some praise. If I reload now, we see we have some columns. I have a container here and next to the container is an invisible column at the moment. I have to add some content quickly to make that visible. Um, what I changed is basically I added a container to give it a, or to limit its width. It's not no more full width at that moment. I added a row and inside the row, I added columns. You can overview that when I close the article, which is the main content in Plone, And when I close the two sites that contain our portlets. So this is an option to um, to give one column to the content and give two columns for, or give one column for both portlets. Um, you can you can also remove statically remove the the portlet stuff with that and have just one content column 
column, which is the idea of Clone Theme Tokyo. So the, the, the Clone Theme that is available for Clone 5.2 uh, basically uh, removes columns in the main template and just serves one column. I will explain a, a little bit more about that later, or feel free to ask questions. If you have questions on that, on the theme, just uh, paste it or, or um, ask it in the chat. I will um, walk through them after I'm finished. Okay. So as I promised, there are columns. You cannot see them. Let's add a little bit uh, content now. Add new folder. I will just create a demo folder. I give it some lorem ipsum text here. Let's add a page. Also some copy and paste to see a little bit afterwards. I do this only to have minimalistic styling afterwards. Let's add some headlines as well. I have to note the editing stuff at this point works. Is, is, it, it's fully available. As you see, you have we, we have the tiny MCE. We have some basic styling tabs are also working. The well, yeah, what we call backend and clone. Basically, the editing pages are fully functional even without any Barcelona theme. So we have just Bootstrap. We have clone, and it works together somehow. Not somehow it works because all the editing stuff is also Bootstrap markup, and that's why we can use it here. So as promised, there is a navigation portlet on the right end here and our content we created. We also see the notifications here. Um, just a short example, not part of the documentation, but if you wanna touch it or if you wanna um, give that some styling, we are talking in the main template, we are talking about that um, notification stuff here. We have um, global status message, Give it a container and we should have um, this tool. Yeah, we have it not here because it's gone when I reload the issue, uh, when I reload the window, when I save it again, now it's also, uh, it uses the container with that is defined in Bootstrap. Okay, let's proceed to the next. I do this at that point because I need some columns, some organization in my seam uh, before we go further. So let's go to the build process. Ah, okay, short, uh, let's show the grids as CSS before. This is part of Barceloneta. Um, I added a link to the documentation. This is basically some magic that relies on classes inside the body tag, um, classes that indicate if there is uh, one column, two or three columns, and based on that class information, it uh, adds some mix-ins to give uh, our seam one column, one column plus one aside or plus two aside. This is basically the magic. Um, you can literally copy that as CSS into your seam and use it. Um, yeah, that gives, uh, gives you exactly the same functionality that Barcelona serves if you need columns in your seam. Good, build process. I have to say what we see here is a pre-compiled uh, uh, CSS file that is shipped with the Bob template stuff. Um, it's not uh, generated by us at the moment. That's what we do now. I switch, uh, quick, quick look at the code editor quickly. I recommend uh, here in this tab, we show the Python process running. It's a shell with uh, the Python process. If you click that little plus, you get a new console. And here we do now the, the seam compiling stuff. Step into your seam folder, which is uh, here. So now I'm in the seam folder. 
I do not explain that in detail because uh, Peter mentioned it. Uh, we are now in the level of the zip folder where our package JSON lives. Here are the scripts in that you can run with npm. So I do npm install to add all dependencies. Magically, there will be added a, a node modules folder in the zip folder. You will see shortly here. Exactly. It's grayed out because git ignore ignores that folder, so it's not added to your code repository. Here are all the, the dependencies, including Bootstrap, including Bootstrap icons and stuff like that. OK, um, looks good. Everything runs through, no errors. That's what we like. Now we have um, npm run build is the command to actually compile the CSS from our SAS files. I documented all the paths in the seeming documentation. Basically, we have this SCSS folder. Here we have a base SCSS with some, some small paddings and stuff. We prepared also something for the portal footer. It's basically empty except some uh, paddings and margins we added here. This base is included in our seam SCSS. And what you see here is everything we need to compile our seam based on Bootstrap. We have some variables. Peter explained something about that before. They are just Bootstrap variables with some colors. I added tone colors here. And the secondary, which is just a gray somewhere. Then I import Bootstrap. Bootstrap is located, as I said, in the node modules folder. Um, I want to explain that this works because we have a little parameter here that says our load pass is node modules. So if you have a configuration and rename node modules or your node stuff is some, somewhere outside your seam folder, you have to take care about that pass. We have this parameter here. That's why node modules uh, is the default. And inside node modules, we have all the stuff we need to compile it. You have two options. You can include everything of Bootstrap, or you can, can include only what you need. Um, there are some required parts, functions, variables, and mixins, and a lot of optional things. I recommend to include everything, except you have a project that is uh, very big, and it's uh, 0.1 kilobyte is important uh, at, the, at the CSS size at the end. But um, for now, I would go with import everything. Last active line, ah, yeah, here is an example. If you have the, um, Peter mentioned on a node package, uh, Plonsim Barceloneta base. If you add this to your dependencies or if you install it manually, you can run this import to um, we'll activate it quickly for better readability. Um, you can run this import to act actually activate the grid. I disable it again. The only thing I have is base. Again, base is inside the SCSS, our base SCSS file. Don't bother with the underscore. I copied that uh, style from Bootstrap. It works, it imports base, and it compiles everything together. The result is inside the CSS folder, a theme CSS, and a mini five version of that. How do they go into our theme? We have a manifest configuration. And inside the manifest, they are referenced. So basically, here you can change that to something else. They are generated by our seam.min.css is static. When we create uh, the Bob template, you can change that to something else. You have to take care about if you change name of, of CSS files and stuff. Another thing I want to mention here, um, a rules is empty. This is basically the point where you add a Diazo rules XML. When you don't have a rules XML, the Yasu is turned off. So um, we serve our templates as they are in the packages. The main template are, is served without any modification, viewlets, page templates, the structure. Um, as you see in the theme, there is no index HTML. So we serve exactly what we get from the Zope application server. We serve exactly what we get from clone um, packages. OK. Last thing I recommend is uh, start the watcher. 
we have a new tab down there. So note watch always uh, is taken care about when you change something. I do not do a lot of examples here because um, Peter did this already. You can ask questions. If you want to see something special, I can give my best and show it to you. Okay, happy seeming. That's the point uh, where the fun starts. Um, I have to say, if, if you get to that point now, the what, whatever comes here is, in my opinion, much more fun than it was uh, in, in the last years, because everything is on the file system. You have, you have everything set up. With NPM, you have tools uh, and, and stuff uh, running that really helps you seeming in, in, a, in, a, yeah, in an explicit way, and there is no um, you don't have to start an instance and, and uh, scripts and stuff and hope everything works together somehow. In the most cases, we work with that since like one and a half year now. It just worked. Let's uh, show that. I shouldn't say it just worked before I just tried something at least. I saved the file. Watcher is starting again here. We don't have to restart clone at that point because our uh, CSS is changed and you can uh, show it directly. So if I go to the seam and do um, a reload, nothing happens. Do a shift reload to directly get the new file. And you see this is a little bit darker now. And here we have our fancy green. Um, that says what we do with our seam is uh, takes effect now. Here is also the example. I can show some examples about navbar and stuff when we have a little bit time later. Next thing I want to show is a uh, logo. Our Bob template is shipped with some, um, some templates. Uh, they are just prepared. If you ask questions, why is that that empty over there? Normally, th this is the navigation, or let's say navigation, uh, the story of Plone. On top of that, there is normally a Plone logo and all the um, all the search stuff. Um, these are overrides. I explain what overrides uh, are in a few minutes. Um, the footer is just empty. That's or yeah, this is the footer. The header is just empty. That's why there is nothing. The, the section viewlet is what we see here as navigation. And I want to extend the navbar brand. Um, I show what, what is that? Bootstrap navbar. I During talks, I always say your documentation now is the Bootstrap documentation. Check it out. I guess I mentioned it somewhere in, in, the, in the training docs. But uh, here you have components and uh, a lot of uh, boilerplate template you can literally copy and paste. And what I added to clone or to this example as navbar is basically a copy of one of the examples we have here. Um, I have to, yeah, I to search it again, it's a combination of search, uh, some navigation, including navbar. It's basically that it's cleaned up and of course, dynamically added navigation links in Plone. So um, if you have an example here and you want to try out something, you can do it. Um, I also have a document, an, an, an example of how to add a logo, navbar brand and just put an image inside and give it a size. So that's what we do here. I copy that code and paste it in here. Good code is always nice formatted code. Remove that, save that. Um, this template is already in overrides. Uh, you don't have to restart the instance at that point. It takes effect. It will give an error because there is no file there. So the navbar is gone and we have plone, which is the alt tag. Text, um, I need an SVG now. I literally borrow it from here and save it to our development. Static folder.
it appears here now. Folder with green, and we have that here. The only thing I have to take care of is the file name should be the same, obviously. Save it. Maybe I extend Bob templates and add a, a logo from Plone in one or two variants to show that without this step. But actually, now we have the Plone logo in. So it works. Um, what I did comment now, um, I changed also that line. It's just a link. So the logo acts as link to the homepage. And um, just one note on the search thing. It's just a search. It, it's nothing special. It's just a form that points to search and it has a name searchable text. That's what you need to give you a search. Let's search for lorem, which is um, pretty sure that it comes into my lorem ipsum text somewhere. So we find our demo page and so the search uh, works as well. Navigation is dynamic. We don't have the drop down navigation that you know from Plone default. You can add one level of drop downs with Bootstrap. For the, um, for the Barceloneta theme, there is a little bit more complex navigation because more level of, uh, of drop downs are supported there. Okay. We added a logo. Next is content type template. Um, I, I think this looks uh, pretty clean, but there is still stuff maybe I don't want to have or I want to change somehow. I have this uh, byline here and I don't know exactly where this template is from. Maybe you want to touch it. So I clean up my editor a little bit for the next step and check what's the documentation size. Um, yeah, let's talk about overrides. As I mentioned already, we have that overrides folder. The overrides folder is registered in our configure file. Um, you have it here. It's the technology or the package or the stuff that works or that is necessary to get this work is JBOT, C3C JBOT. Um, it, uh, it's a declared directory um called overrides as you see on the left pane and uh, also our theme layer so that's everything you need whenever you put a file inside that overrides folder that has a special name it overrides a template that exists in the plone application server in the plone ecosystem somewhere this dotted name is the actual path so um, the sections view led is plone app layout this is the package name there is a folder called view led and the template is named sections um, we now want to change the template for the default content type document. In uh, my demo folder, I added a document. When I add it, you see that in the headline, edit page, or page is the, the content type name to be clear. Um, and I want to override that template now. So, um, after a while, you will learn where this stuff lives in. I explained already in our parts folder we have omelette and in omelette there are hundreds of packages. If you're not familiar with that, ask in the chat, ask questions, dig around a little bit. Um, you can always do a search in there and yeah, I will not recommend a search. I search on the console most of the time because it's much faster than using an SDK. That's the only thing I, I don't know how to search in Visual Studio. Maybe there are other guys that explain that a little bit better, how to come to, a, um, to an actual template. Um, I know where I have to look. It's uh, in Omelette. There is Plone. app content types. This is the package where some of the default content types of Plone are from. We have our well-known browser folder. Inside browser, there is a template subfolder. And here we have some listings, summary listing, tabular listing you may already know. And there is also our document. So that's the file I want to have. Quick look into it. Pretty much nothing except a text block in there. I um, copied that file 
this small thing closes everything. So if you're lost, just click it and you start from the root. I love that button. Problems in Tokyo, browsers, overrides, and I paste it in there. So what I have to fix now is the path to the origin of this template. Got it name. Again, add some X in, save it. And if I reload, of course, nothing happens. If you add something to that overrides, you have to restart your instance. Um, you can navigate through the windows here. I use uh, hotkeys on my keyboard. I Google for the hotkey, I love them. Um, just stop the instance. I do a clear uh, for the window to see what happens from, from a new window or from um, without any stuff that was already there before. If you have an error in the template or if there is something broken, you will see it. So an, an instance restart is always a good idea. And if I check this in browser now, um, I see somewhere three axis. That's um, my indicator, it works. So now I can modify that template somehow. Um, I don't step too much into details here. Sorry. I used the example I made in the documentation. This is basically um, the easiest or the, the, yeah, the most basic example of a page template. We have the heading, we have um, the lead paragraph, the description mostly, and we have our text block. There are different ways of adding text uh, to, to something. Uh, that's not how you should do it. It's one way of doing it with some uh, code that takes uh, care of links relative to something. Um, the important thing I need to explain here is we fill slot main. So normally you fill lower slots that um, gives us the option to insert stuff between title, description, there is above title, below title stuff that's all available in the main template. So um, I will show that quickly. We have that actually in our main template, but I'm in this uh, point or at this uh, example, I don't want to use it. So here are the defined slots. And if we use the main slot, we override everything that is inside the article stuff. Um, for example, we override the above content title. If you have ULETs registered to that um, provider, of course, you need that provider in your template. So it starts getting complicated here. For now, I want to keep the um, example simple. And if I save that, I restarted the instance. And now if I reload, um, you see the byline is gone because the provider is missing. But you have now full control over everything. And you have also control, nothing pops up here because it, is, it, it is registered in somewhere somehow. Um, this is an approach of start making a template that everybody understands. And if you need a provider in there, you literally can copy it. So. Um, from the main template, if I need that um, below content title provider thingy, I guess that is it, you can add it to your actual document template. This should give us yeah, the byline again. So a little bit more obvious what happens in your template when you have that different layers in one page template. Okay, let's move it again. Okay, that's about page templates. We made an override. The other option um, than doing an override is you can register a new template. Um, basically, we said example for the main template, we registered a new template. We gave it the same name, that's why we have overridden an existing template. But if we gave that a name like name temp or main template two, we have a new template. It doesn't work for the main template that way, but for content type stuff, you could do it that way. Um, I'm not stepping into that. We have, uh, or Mike is talking about that later when he when he shows you the seeming based on Diazo. There is an example you can add entire views with plone CLI. You have to register them. 
registration takes place in the configure CCML. And if you want to configure it for a specific content type, the for attribute is important for you. So there you can, like folders have two, three, four different uh, options of listing content. You can also add a second, a third option for example, for a document or for a news item that is selectable when you add the option or it's not selectable, it's just there and you can use it when you know how to apply the view on that. So this is when you register a new template as um, an option to, an, or as an alternative to an override of templates. Okay, um, next part is not that interesting. Um, I, uh, we, we had the same example from Peter, so I um, move on here a little bit more quickly. Um, in a real world example, of course, you don't want to ship fonts directly from Google. Google, you probably want to download it, add it to your seam and ship it from there. I can show you an example of how to do this. I, it's not part of the training. That's what I have to say. But um, let's see how we can extend our scene. I add a fonts as CSS. I, inside the fonts, I just do the import. Um, you can use this also to make more smaller SCSS files for your project, for example, different components or different content types. If it, if it grows, um, you can split it up a little bit to see what happens in the different parts. Um, we need just the import um, to get the fonts in. And um, in the seam, I have to import now our fonts SCSS. That's everything I need to do here. And before I save, that's the stuff I have to copy over from the documentation. Um, nah, I don't have to copy it from the documentation. Maybe I show you how to do it correctly. Um, in the documentation, it's mentioned. I know there is um, a variable for defining fonts in uh, Bootstrap. I have no clue what the name is and I have absolutely no clue what I should write in there to not break everything. So that's the point where I have to look it up. I go to node modules, the bootstrap, bootstrap stuff lives inside obviously a bootstrap folder. There is a SCSS folder. That's where the magic comes from. And if you scroll all the way down, you have a variables SCSS. That's are the actual variables from bootstrap. And here you can uh, pick up what you need. I search, I do a quick search with for fonts, control F or command F, I guess. And you have different stuff uh, specified, monospace and sans serif fonts. I copy that line, it's a little bit long. Um, the example is part of the documentation and I will add it somewhere into our variables over there. Um, what I need to change is, actually add open sans and we can keep that stuff or we can remove it. Doesn't matter because I don't have 20 fonts in there. Um, I keep system UI, I keep, I don't know. Let's keep everything for now. I remove the defaults tag. That's an error in the documentation I have to fix. And now if I save, I have to switch to the other tab and then you see, um, it's compiled again. So in the background, watch is still working. It sees I changed my seam as CSS and we should have a little bit different font now when I reload the window. So that's how to add a font and just use bootstrap variable. Of course, you can also do, um, something like, um, H1. And then add styling for h1 and use apply that font only for some specific html tags that's also possible but in our example we use the bootstrap variable for that yeah i promised um, an example of how to do this a little bit better is maybe the tokyo sim repository there is a fonts folder again the example with open sans we added the, the true track fonts directly to the package and we have an SCSS file. It's um, surprise, it's called underscore fonts. And here you see what you need to do to register that font, that uh, through type font files 
to be available in your package. So it's not magic. It's nothing you need to, you, you have to be scared of. Um, that's all you have to do for fonts and different um, uh, styles from the same font based on what you want to have or what you want to serve. So this is an example. Um, I have to say, uh, the, we create ploneseam.tokyo in this training. ploneseam.tokyo is made for plone 5.2. And when we created that package, the idea was the same. We want to use Bootstrap and we want to get rid of columns. We want to simplify basically seeming for plone but it was 5.2. So you see in uh, the source code of Plonesim Tokyo of the, um, of the main or master branch, there are tons of overrides because we had to touch a lot of stuff in Plon 5.2 to get um, a clean view. I can show that quickly. So this is basically Plonesim Tokyo with some demo content, it looks pretty much the same. Um, in 5.2, there was tons of overrides necessary to get this archived. Um, after the training, I will um, update that theme for Plone 6 with Bootstrap 5. And as you saw in the example, it's pretty close to what you see on the website. So basically, I have to delete a lot of overrides because now we have the Bootstrap markup in all templates, which makes it much more easier to have a clean theme for some uh, like that. Okay, add custom font, we did. Yeah, um, I, in the documentation, font is just an example. You can touch whatever you want to touch with variables or with uh, CSS. You can um, tear in components from what you see here. Um, we have some minutes, maybe we can um, archive that quickly or show an example. My, um, my, I, what I love is cards because they're tiny, they're simple. Um, this, this is bootstrap documentation. You copy this stuff. I add it to my, um, to my page template, just as an example of how you can use bootstrap. This is the page template override. And for example, I want to place the description inside a card. I do just this. And we should get a bootstrap component that looks like that, but keeps our description in. So basically um, bootstrap. To fix stuff, it's a little bit broken here. Um, the, there is no image or if you have a news item, you can add the news item image there. Um, there was no margin to the bottom. That's also available in bootstrap just as class or helper classes. And the three is margin bottom three, three uh, units. Units are declared in Bootstrap and you can use them. And now the margin bottom is there and the image is gone. So this is just an example of how quick you can use components from the documentation. And there are tons of documentation. Uh, there are tons of components you can reuse, especially for um, UI patterns you want to reuse or stuff you maybe need. I recommend the example section from the documentation. There is, for example, stuff like sidebar. Um, we are going to use uh, that in a project as well. Um, it's the, the code is pretty simple to get that, and it just works out of the box. That's the good thing. So have a look at the Bootstrap documentation to have really fun on that. Okay, last step, um, I have here my edit bar. Um, people that know me also know they, that I really don't love the edit bar. Let's replace them. There are definitely options. I show the way how to do this now. Um, in our setup PY, you have an option to add a dependency. Install requires. And the second thing is in our configuration. This is an example how you do it programmatically. Of course, you can add the, the package to the build out, run build out, and then you have it and you can install it manually. If, I, if you do it that way, um, you um, have it installed automatically as when you install the package. 
So um, I because I touched the setup py, I have to rerun build out now. This should take care of the requirements of that package, and it should um, fetch the the package and um, add it to the project and activate it in the project and um, make it available for us. Let's see what happens when we run the build out. Not so much output, output on the console, but um, some output on my um, on my example here, and there is an error now. While build out tries to fetch that, I can show what I basically wanted to show. Let's add that example. Um, we made a replacement for the sidebar, the, um, for the toolbar, which is called sidebar. Um, if you log in, like that, um, it unifies navigation and editing features of clone. Um, there is one template, so if you need to touch it, if you need to modify it, you don't have to bother with uh, the complexity of the edit bar. There is only one uh, viewlet or one, uh, one page template that you can also easily override to get something like that which is not stick next to your seam. Um, if you go with uh, custom UI, or if you um, want to create a website layout, uh, a modern website layout that is based on one column, this is an option for you. I have no idea why my build out is uh, failing here at the moment, but maybe sometimes you just have to read error messages. And a little quote is missing here. I guess it is it. Let's give it one more minute. If it's not working, I will skip that and um, yeah, proceed. I see nothing in the chat. I also see nothing in the Slack. So I guess no questions so far. Um, I think there are um, informations about the trainers somewhere around the training page. Feel free to ping us or me if you have questions or if you need to know something. Um, I will push the code I created here inside my package to a branch of the PlonSim Tokyo package. So um, what you see in the documentation um, is available as code. Later in the Plone Theme Tokyo, I will create a branch that is called something like uh, Conference uh, Training 2021. And there is the actual code I created today. So I will push that after the training. So you have it for reference if you want to try this at home or if you want to um, see exactly what I added here. So build out runs through. Everything fine. I have to start up my instance again. Here it says um, everything worked. It has to pick something because I didn't define a version. It has to pick a version 1.50, which is the newest and edit it. Clone is there. And if I reload, the edit bar is gone or not. It's not gone. I have to create a new clone site or as Peter mentioned before, in the site setup add-on section, there is now the add-on I can activate. So as our own package, I have to do this, or I install or I create a new clone site, then it's installed automatically. So um, I like that approach because it doesn't bother with my layout. Uh, it just an overlay. And I have to say, this is code that's written for Plone 5.2. It works, of course, but um, the styling is not Bootstrap 5. We will update uh, our sidebar and use the sidebar component for that. I also have to mention there is work in progress uh, on the edit bar of Plone. It's part of the ES6 branch, and I guess it's going to be merged in a couple of days or weeks. 
if somebody knows more, let me know. Okay, that's from my side, seeming from scratch. Please give us feedback. Let me know if I missed something or if I should cover something different in this part of the training. I would say we make a short break, about four minutes, and proceed in at uh, yeah, like in, in like four minutes with Mike. Thank you and have a nice conference. So as the colleagues earlier said, uh, if you have questions, um, don't hesitate to ask them. Uh, we are there for that. For now, you can ask them in the in the Slack channel, in the training channel. Um, if you have later questions, you will find us usually hanging around on Discord in the blown channels in the classic UI, for example. Just ping us there. You will find me there under Mr. Tango and the colleagues are also there. Let me try if I can share my screen already. Can you see my screen correctly? Looks good to me. Yeah, it's not too, too small. If I should increase the, the fonts and things like that, so just let me know. Okay, uh, I wrote earlier in the in the chat uh, that uh, you should upgrade the Bob templates plone CLI because I did uh, some last uh, quick fixes in the Diazo route we will use later. Uh, if you haven't done that, you can also fix that copy uh, copy paste uh, later. Um, that's that shouldn't be an issue. The training uh, docs should uh, have already the, the correct rules and all uh, in place, but it's a, it's a bit easier if you use the, the current uh, Bob templates plone uh, bit uh, 6.0 beta 9, um, which has already the correct stuff. So let's uh, see what we will uh, discuss today. Um, my use case. Um, I want to show you is uh, for me the classical case a web designer comes with a layout it's either just a photoshop whatever or uh, you already have a click dummy another situation could be you uh, got the web design from uh, some websites uh, and we will use today um, this uh, theme from start bootstrap uh, the reason why I chose that is it's relatively simple from, from the content and all, and also relatively close to plain bootstrap. Uh, other themes I tried out usually use a lot of jQuery plugins and, and other uh, stuff, and this makes uh, the whole thing, it's all, it's all possible, but it makes uh, more work for us, and uh, we, we want to um, focus on, on what's important for now. Uh, what you will learn, um, you will, yeah, prepare your development environment. We will use Plone CLI a lot. We uh, will also, uh, yeah, create content for the theme in the Plone site. Uh, we will integrate the, the static layout we got from uh, startbootstrap.com. We will shortly uh, see how to compile the styles and how that works. Uh, your colleagues showed you already uh, some of the stuff in use. 
Um, we will also create some HTML snippets as uh, TinyMC templates to achieve some of the content areas, uh, which are not so easy to achieve by just using TinyMC. So it's, uh, it's a nice way to just use an uh, existing HTML snippet and uh, add it to TinyMC and then use it. And what we also do is we will uh, create uh, content types and views um, for um, the, the products area. So let's start. Um, we will go on the terminal, use plone CLI create add-on to create an add-on called plone seam business casual 21. 21 because there was a, a different seam with the same name uh, also from start bootstrap uh, back then which we uh, which we also used in training center i think there's even uh, uh, seam products on collective you can use so this is the new one it will ask you for description uh, for now i leave it out uh, you can here give a hint for the clone version Right now, this uh, doesn't not have big effects. Uh, it was earlier used more for differentiation between uh, Plone 4 and 5. Uh, right now, between uh, 5 and, and 6, there are not many differences for the, uh, Plone CLI related. So the Python version, uh, stick to Python 3. And VS Code support, we also want. So now it's generating our Plum package like you have seen before. Now we CD into the package. And the next step will be at Plone CLI at Plone CLI at seam. Uh, this is a, a different package, so it's not uh, Seam Basonita, neither uh, Seam Basic. Um, funnily enough, this is one of the more basic uh, uh, seams also, um, because we will not have much in it, because most of our, our layout and our uh, resources we will use are coming with the seam we, uh, we will download uh, soon. So we will call, uh, I should have put this here, but uh, we will call the seam um, the same as the, the original name. So we will just put business casual 21. Now we have the seam. Let's uh, fill it with the with the actual um, seam from Start Bootstrap. If you follow the link from the training, you will go here. You can download here, but you can also uh, click the preview button, which also has a download uh, up there. Um, and here you can also see how the how how the seam looks. Uh, we want to achieve. Um, so we have different different sites with different sections. Here you have products listed. And here you have the store, which is basically the open hours. And again, the about uh, section. So uh, if you download this, um, you will have a zip file. And if you take this and extract that, or you could actually go right from the zip file, it's better to show it now. Uh, so this is this is the actual content we want. This is the just the, the name folder, and this is the the stuff we care about. So if we select that and extract and go uh, 
I created a new folder. So we go in our in our scene package, right down to the scene folder we have now. And here there's already some stuff in it. We don't care much about that. So we extract that in that folder. If it, if it asks you uh, to override uh, files, just say yes. And now let's open VS Code from this year. Yes, we trust. So let's open the seam folder and inspect what we have here. The index HTML is now the index HTML from the seam. And we also have other pages like the about and products. Um, we will not use this, but uh, we will mainly based on the on the index HTML. So let's have a look what's next. So the structure you can you can look at this is basically uh, what you have after you filled in the seam you downloaded. So clone CLI gives us a easy command to build our complete uh, development setup. Um, as you can see, it also shows you exactly what commands are running. So it's creating a virtual environment, Python, running build out uh, bootstrap to create the bin build out scripts, and then it runs uh, bin build out. You can run all these commands uh, from any place, uh, anywhere inside your package folder. So it doesn't have to be the root folder. CloneCL, I will figure out where it is. So you can run the build command later also from a subfolder and also the other commands CloneCRI provides us. So while this is running, let's look. Uh, the next step would be using CloneCLI serve to, to start um, clone. Uh, you can also just do the bin instance FG, which is basically what CloneCLI serve does. But again, CloneCLI serve works anywhere inside the folder structure. So if we go already in the folder structure to our sim folder where we do most of the work, um, we still can use CloneCLI serve. It also shows us that we can open the website uh, on this URL. Um, we don't need that. I already have it open here. So let me reload. We get the welcome page. Uh, for now, it's in German, but it will change soon. Admin, admin. So let me switch this to English. So you could also use the advanced uh, the advanced tab earlier and right away activate uh, the seam or, or other add-ons, but we will do it the classical way, which means we just go on the add-ons, we find our seam here, we will install it. Now we see it's installed. Right now here, this still looks like uh, like Barcelona, this will also not change. Um, if we go on the seaming control panel, you see now we have a seam here, which is active. That's our seam. And we have the Barcelona here. Um, this control panel is never seamed. So even if we have some serious issues in the in the seam, in the diazo rules or whatever, this will always look like this so that you can activate or de deactivate your seam and, and fix the, the problem. Um, let me open this in a new tab so that we can 
have a look at the home page, which now already looks like what we want. This is rather static now. So for now I can go on edit. That's fine. This is uh, all the edit views um, are coming from, from uh, default clone. So this is basically what you have in Bassonita, except that the banner and the logo is uh, cut out of this uh, area. But everything else, the styles uh, here in the edit form, uh, in the manage portlets or in the control panels, this all looks like default clone. Um, the reason why we do that is we, normally you don't care how the how the back end how these control panels are styled. You don't want to reorient the wheel and and bring with your style uh, all this uh, and and restyle that. Um, you, there are options to do that, but uh, normally it's not important. And uh, also, set, it has the advantage that when you have uh, um, like manuals and, and documentation um, which use default clone style, they are yeah they have a better use for more people, and everything looks like uh, every everybody knows it. The only difference is the seam part. So. We are locked in, so this is this is no difference to uh, um, uh, being locked out. Except, let me show you in a isolated container where we're not locked in. So the only difference is the toolbar is not there. Yeah. Um, so, okay, how are we going from here? Too many tabs open. So this we went through. Um, for now, because this all is uh, static, uh, I would suggest we disable the seam. That's why I left this open here. But other, other than that, you can always go on site setup and you go there. So to deactivate that, the best is to just activate Basunita again, which uh, means now when I do the reload here, I have the default clone again. So now to really achieve what, uh, what we have here, we want to create the, the products, uh, the, the menu, menu uh, items. Um, so let's create uh, the, the free we have, the, the, the home we have, anyway and let's create just one more so that so that we can uh, later see the difference uh, um, when we replace this with uh, with actually with the, the the dynamic content coming from clone so otherwise we we wouldn't see the difference is that the seam still static or is it is it something we created in clone so uh, let's just close this. So folder. About. Then the next will be products. and store and our extra content more. So let's get rid of the other stuff of the default content clone uh, ads. We don't need news and events here, and we can even delete the users folder. So let's just delete it. So now our menu looks already like it should. Just to make sure when you put more stuff under the, the more, um, menu 
clone by default has this uh, drop down menu, but uh, our theme doesn't provide that. So to not have the menu breaking, we will force it uh, to only have only have one uh, one item. Also, you, you can see here a bit, this is a bit different than clone default. This is already coming from our from our seam. So there are some configurations uh, applied already. Um, this is when you create a seam with, with clone CLI, there are some uh, settings already in the profiles you can adjust. Um, and uh, for me, this makes the most sense. So in the menu, I only want to see collection, folder, and link. All the other types like file, image, I never want to see in, in the menu or even news items, for example. If you have a, an, a folder with hundreds of news items and you have a left side navigation with the portlet, it just looks odd and uh, it doesn't make sense to, to show them. You can always create a folder a folder will be a good good start for a menu point and then put the page in it and set it as default. This is what we are doing now. So we're going in the about page. Let's get inspired here. So this is the title. This is that. Um, the rest we will uh, do later. So first, just the title and description. You can already publish it. So when we go on the folder about, we can set this now as a default page so that when we go on about, this, the page is already shown by default. So under products, we will create a collection because we want to list the products here. Um, let's just call it products. Um, the rest we will do later, so just save it. Let's publish it and go on products and also set the collection as a default. Now on store, we create the last page for now. And this is So set it as default page in that folder. Let's publish this. So this is the basic content structure for now. The next step will be creating HTML snippets in TinyMC or for TinyMC. The way I did that, you can, if you want to go fast, you just uh, copy it out here. But this is basically the about page or is it, no, this is the sec yeah, section about. Um, so if you go on the, on the page here and you go on the about, and you inspect that in the browser, you will see that you have this section element here. So this is what we want. This is what we want to include because it, it contains all the content and also the, uh, the classes which are needed for the theme to work. So you could just go here, copy uh, outer HTML, uh, and then go in your editor and uh, create create the file there. 
but and the whole thing will be wrapped by this. So it's just uh, for TinyMC, uh, you need this uh, diff tag here and one below. And this is what I do uh, did with all the templates you you see, you see here. Um, and then we create this at the file. Then so this is the section about. So we go with the editor to our theme, to the folders, um, TinyMC templates. You see here, we have some of the examples that Stefan showed earlier. These are the example uh, hero, hero left and pricing from the bootstrap examples page. Uh, so you can use this also, uh, they are there already, but we will not use them for now. So section about HTML, copy and save. So the, where was it here? So the next one, yeah, this note uh, we will take care soon because some of them have, uh, um, some of them have, have uh, pictures included. And let's see if I go a bit like this. So normally when you copy the, uh, the stuff from the, from the layout directly, uh, this is the or original path, but for it to work later, so that uh, inside clone, uh, so inside our our seam, uh, it finds these pictures. Uh, we have to add this, and this is uh, basically plus plus seam plus plus, and then the ID of the seam we create. If you give a different seam name, this will be different. Yeah, so this is unique to your to your seam. Here, I think I did it. In both sections already so that you have this. I think here there was also something. Yeah, so it's it's taken care of. If you copy it from here, um, you have, where was it here? And this is the section intro. Safe. And the next one is the section promise. So, and I think this is the last one. So, which is this section opening hours? So our templates are in place. Um, what we need to do next is to tell TinyMCE where to find these templates. By default, we have this registration already. So let's go on the, on the editor. We have here the profiles folder. So this is outside of the sim folder and inside profiles defaults, we have configuration options. Uh, you will find things like uh, the, the sim name and uh, some other metadata. And inside the registry folder, 
you can have different files. Uh, the names doesn't matter, uh, don't matter, because uh, this is basically, sometimes you see just registry XML, but you can also have just a registry folder and then uh, have uh, smaller files, which are um, just taking care of some stuff. So here we see display types in for the navigation. This is the setting uh, to change the default uh, settings there. And we will focus now on the tiny MC here. So if you look here, let me close the sidebar. Um, you can see we have here already a list of, uh, of templates. This is a record which will uh, register um, the templates fields um, in, the, in the config registry. And this is the way how TinyMCE will find our templates. So um, make sure that this is valid JSON. So it's not a Python dictionary. So the last comma should not be there. Um, to make it simple, let's just take the complete value tag here and replace it. So save. So now we have our name, our names for the for the different sections, uh, and this is the path here. Still, again, this is unique to your theme, so this will uh, be different in different themes. This is the folder tinymc templates inside your theme folder, and then the file name according uh, to the name you chose when you created that. Um, just for you to, uh, for the info, the, this part is right now necessary to, um, to register or to activate the TinyMC template plugin. Uh, this will most likely not be necessary in the future, or at least uh, it will uh, change a bit. So normally you, you can activate uh, activate the template in the future by just checking a checkbox in the TinyMC uh, control panel, like you can do with a lot of other plugins. Um, it will no, be no longer an external plugin and you don't have to put in this URL. But right now uh, we are still uh, running with the first alpha uh, of Clone 6 and uh, we still have the old uh, resource registry running here. Um, this will change uh, in the next couple of weeks hopefully when we are ready and merged the ES6 effort. Here are some examples uh, how you can uh, change the HTML filter in, in Plone. This will change the backend filtering and also configure uh, TinyMC to allow uh, certain attributes or tags. One uh, tag I already included here is the button, which by default is not uh, allowed. Um, because in some of the bootstrap templates, we have buttons, so we want the buttons in there. Okay, so far so good. Let's have a look at uh, HTML. Um, we can best do this. by using the editor. So we have the seam, we have the index HTML, which we will use as our layout. So this is how it comes from, from the designer. We don't need to change a lot. Um, for production, I would also replace the, uh, the CDNs here uh, by not having the CDNs, uh, at least in Europe, that's uh, what you want uh, for data privacy reasons um, not to use uh, um, external CDNs or use different ones. There are advantages and disadvantages uh, having that. But you can also make this locally available and uh, um, change the links. For now, we will just keep it here. Um, this, what we have here, uh, we will remove. 
because we will include the style sheets in a different way. I will show you soon. That's one thing. The other thing is in the in the footer of the content on the lower part. Here we have some JavaScripts. This one has only these two. The first, which is the Bootstrap um, JavaScript, the, the Bootstrap bundle containing the JavaScript from, from Bootstrap. This is shipped by default in Plone 6. Um, and uh, so we don't need to include this anyway. This is like jQuery uh, and Bootstrap um, JS. They are globally available, so you don't have to think about that. You, you will have the Bootstrap 5 version there, so not our concern. This is the JavaScript we will still include, so that stays like it is. Then one thing, um, Clone has this thing called uh, global status me messages. Uh, this is when you when you go somewhere and you edit, for example, and you save, then you have these info boxes here. And these portal messages, we also want to uh, show when the theme is active. So to have that, we take this small no small html snippet i didn't copy it just yet so we copy that and we insert this here so this is one change we want to make and another change is we want to wrap this uh, these sections here. For example, we see here we have two sections, and this is the whole main content area. Um, many bootstrap themes are kind of bad in in how the markup is structured from from the semantic point of view, which needs needs to be fixed. So we give it the main point, and this. This actually gets filled with our content area from Plone. So this is this, and here we see it wrapped. So you can also copy paste uh, in case you did some typos or anything. So now, how how do we uh, get get uh, the styles? Um, to to also oops, to also make adjustments later, we will we will go to the folder where they have the styles. You can always uh, put this differently, give different folder names, and so on. But for now, we call the theme SCSS. So we are using ZAS or SCSS. And in the theme, you see we're just pulling in the existing styles from the from the layout. Save it. And this is basically what we need uh, for now to uh, to get in. So the next step will be having a look at the uh, package JSON. So if you go inside the theme folder, you will find the package JSON, like you will find also in the two other packages uh, the colleagues created before. They are pretty much looking the same or at least uh, similar. So here you have some uh, yeah, commands you can, you can use. Most important is build and watch for now. So let's do it right in the VS code here. Going inside the theme folder. Here we have the package JSON. We run npm install. 
to make sure that all the dependencies and dev dependencies are installed. This will not take too long because our list is not long. The difference here is dev dependencies are used for building for bundling resources and dependencies are dependencies you actually have from your theme. So as uh, Peter told you before, um, you can use, for example, the Bassoneta um, styles, even if in your theme, if you want, or even if you go that way uh, or this way. Um, so you can do an NPM install uh, um, Bassoneta uh, base theme. Uh, I don't remember the, the correct name, but uh, um, you can find it uh, in his documentation. Um, and then you have it in your uh, node modules uh, folder and you can use it. And this you would uh, put in dependencies uh, or in dev dependencies, de uh, depends a bit uh, how you use it. If you're just using CSS or, or ZAS uh, files, usually it's enough to put them in dev dependencies because you will compile them later to CSS and you only want to ship the CSS, the, the SSS is not necessary later in the browser. Okay. Um, this was running, then let's run npm build. And yuhu, we have a problem. I think the problem is ah the folder styles. Yeah, um, I was not not done. Sorry. Um, we need to adjust the, the paths. By default, uh, we have the same folder name like uh, in the Barcelona example, but in this theme, it's not called styles, the folder, it's called CSS. So they are basically for places where we have to adjust this. Um, was it? Style in style. Oh, that's it. So let's try again. Still not. What is it this time? Style seam SSS, no such. Where did I? Ha. Okay. No. CSS and here CSS2. And there was CSS2. So we basically have to make sure that the scripts are using the, the correct folder name. Uh, another way would be just rename this uh, CSS folder to styles that should work too. So this time it worked. Um, now we have the, the styles uh, coming from the seam, but they are actually get pulled in our uh, seam SCSS and the seam SCSS does compile to these files. So we have the CMS SSS map for, for the browser to show you the, the real uh, CSS and the minified version um, of that. And uh, this we will use in Plone. So 
this we did. Um, one thing uh, worth mentioning is we have a vendor folder and inside the vendor folder, we will have all the resources we installed with uh, NPM or, or Jan. Um, so our everything which is not dev dependency, but a dependency, as I mentioned earlier, will be copied in here so that later we can, when we uh, ship our seam to, to clone or deliver it, um, we can actually delete the node modules or the, the one level higher. So if you look here inside the seam, you have these node modules, but there's a lot of stuff in it because this is all the build tooling stuff. But inside the vendor, you will have node modules. And when you have defined dependencies here, they will be in there and you can use them from your seam like you can use the, the local JavaScript uh, we already have in the template. So let's move on. The next interesting thing would be to have a look at the manifest. The manifest is the central configuration file of the seam. Here you have the visible seam name you will find in the in the user interface and the description. You can even have a, um, a preview image here, which right now is not used here, but um, that's what you can do. Uh, this also points to the rules file. By default, it's the rules XML, and I wouldn't change that. Uh, here's the prefix also, which is the, the prefix you've seen in a lot of places. This is unique to your uh, seam, and it's auto-generated by, uh, by Plone CLI. Here you have uh, production and uh, uh, TinyMC content CSS. Earlier um, in Plone 5, for example, you also had to, like a development. Uh, CSS, but this was uh, because you could uh, you could point it to a less file, and the less file would later on in the browser also uh, be compiled, and you can adjust it there. Uh, this is not uh, provided anymore. So uh, through the web, you can only write CSS, not SCSS or less. Um, so we only need the registration here for the final CSS you want to ship. And this is also because, uh, or the reason why we earlier removed uh, the, the CSS inclusion in the HTML file, because this is the place where we pointed to the CSS, also for TinyMC, so that TinyMC can include it in the iframe and uh, looks basically the same. You can have uh, additional parameters like uh, um, defining the portal URL as a as a variable, and this you can then also use uh, in inside uh, uh, by other rules later. But for now, this is not uh, not that important. So as we can see here, I forgot. Yeah. We have to adjust here also the folder name, but this, as I said, depends on, on if you change the folder name or how you want to structure. Um, you can also separate the uh, SCSS and the compiled uh, files. You can put it in a dist subfolder as you like. Um, this can also change in the future the, the default, but uh, at the end, it's easy to change and to adjust to your means. So when we have done this, we can actually uh, run npm run watch. I keep switching in the wrong windows. So we are in the seam folder. So let's uh, run npm run watch which will run a watcher um, and this makes sure whenever I change something in the CSS, uh, it will recompile to the, to the CSS. So we also need to start the clone site. So let's use clone CLI serve for that. Doesn't really matter where you're in the package. Clone CLI, we figured it out. There's something wrong. Um, if 
think I have somewhere something running, which I shouldn't. Let me see. CI surf and the terminal here. Ha. Huh. Okay, I can leave it here. It's okay. Uh, I don't need to have it in the editor, but you can do it both ways. So, okay. So we have on one side uh, plum running in one terminal, and here inside the uh, VS Code, we have uh, a second terminal where we have. Uh, our npm uh, watch running so that means we now can uh, go to our clone again now we want to let me verify yeah now we want to go to the integration side to the diazo side that's why you're here right um let's go on seeming Let's activate our sim. And go on the front page. So we want to replace now some of the of the things in the in the layout so if we if we go on home for example we have our sections and in our example we have it wrapped with the main uh, but also we have the navigation here um, and this has different stuff and Somewhere in here, there was the nav bar. Nav bar, nav. Uh, nav bar, nav here, it's because it's on mobile. So the image was too small. Yeah, something like that. Um, Anyway, first thing first, it's a good thing to know what clone actually renders. One thing to find that out is to open clone, not like we, we are doing it here, like localhost 8080 clone, but using a different domain, for example, 127.001. Uh, We'll open the same page, but the difference is there's no diazo activated. The reason is when you go on the seeming control panel in the advanced settings, you will see unseam host names. And by default, we have this already here. You can have also online uh, the same. If you want to tweak later and you want to have some domain names where you can have it unseamed uh, so that you can inspect that. For now, um, locally, this works fine, the default. And the nice thing is, let me do this the same style. So if I go on inspect, let's move this to the bottom. We can actually inspect what Plone has on, on the Plone side. So on in Plone, we will find now something like nav bar nav. Back then it was uh, these these classes didn't exist. So in Plone 6, they are closer to uh, what you also have on the on the seam side. So when we use the the editor, let's make this big for now. Um, we are opening the HTML and we find the, the place where we want to uh, 
replace the static part with the dynamic content from Plone. And this is what we want. This is this URL here with the nav bar nav. So it's basically nav bar nav on the theme side and nav bar nav on the content side. And to achieve that, we are opening the rules file. Um, let's maybe close all these sections here. Tiny MCA, we don't need package JSON for now, also not so. Okay, here, just to give a give you a short summary, the first part, this is like including the all the backend, like when you go on edit in your theme or when you go on the control panels, everything which looks default Basoneta, this comes directly from Basoneta uh, with this uh, include rule. So just leave it there. Um, if you want, or basically the, the, what this does is you have this kind of condition in Barcelona backend, they have, uh, they have a similar thing, but it's like inverse, like this one. So it says, if not content uh, has these classes, then uh, it's the backend. And by default, we are using this. So when we have um, these classes in the body tag, clone injects them. Uh, this means we are not on edit, we are not on a control panel or anything else like that. So this is the way how you can uh, switch from default clone to what you want to style. Um, here we uh, point to the, the seam file. In this case, we chose the index HTML, but you could also have different files. You could also use something like this is the default, but uh, um, use a different one under a condition. So you can add the if condition here when the path is like this or when some body classes are like that, use a different uh, layout for the start. Yeah, you can have different ones, but we keep it uh, simple for now. Um, no seam basically means uh, when there's no visual portal wrapper on the content side, which from Plone always is there, uh, then just don't see anything. Uh, that is a is a fallback, so that when you have something which shouldn't be seen by the ISO, um, it usually don't have this like Ajax calls and things like that. So um, most of the stuff you can just leave it there. But what we actually want to do now is we want to take care of the navigation. So we have you covered. Let's activate this rule. This rule, what it does is it uses the replace uh, functionality from Diazo. Um, because of this prefix uh, CSS dot, uh, we are using CSS selectors. If you remove that, uh, this part should be an XPath selector. They are much more verbose, but they're also much more powerful. So sometimes when you want to uh, do something tricky, XPath is the way to go. But in general, I would uh, recommend uh, sticking with the CSS classes. Uh, they, they get generated or converted into uh, XPath in the background anyway, but you don't want to read them and you make more mistakes if you use XPath. Um, so if you don't have to, don't use them. Um, I'm not sure why this is still using this. I thought I had this changed, but maybe I also have the not updated Bob templates somehow, even though I updated it. Um, this will change. So normally you don't have to adjust this. Because when you want to uh, see my bootstrap seam, it's uh, it's a bit easier to to have it like this. Um, you can either say I want the LE elements, and uh, here we have this. This says is the seam side, but it says seam minus children, um, which means not the element in the template itself. So not this element we want to replace, but we want to replace the children. 
So that's what the, the first uh, condition says. And the second uh, said, give me this, and then inside, give me the LEs. So we will replace the, the children of the NAV bar NAV in the layout with the LE elements coming from Plone. Uh, we could leave this like that, or we could uh, remove this and also use the children here, which is the same. So if we do this, we save this. Um, let's go back to our browser. Now we see we have our more button here and our menu is working. So we see here the URL is changing. So we are actually going Right now, the content still has our index HTML content, so that's not so fun. Let's fix that. We will go to the area where we have the content. Let's activate that. What does this do? It finds the content and also here is the wrong this uh this time we want to use content core content core is the main content area but without the title and without the disc, uh, description and without um delete image for example so it's really the base uh the base text area which you added with the tiny mc for this theme we uh, that's what we want um, in most other cases, you want to uh, use the, just the content, not content core, which gives you a bit more of the, the content area. And on the theme side, we have our main tag, which we uh, use to wrap the, the sections, and we will just replace everything inside the main template uh, with uh, the content core area coming from Plone. Let's do a reload. And now we see we have here now the welcome plone. Um, here we don't see much for now because we are not taking over the uh, the headlines. So let's continue. We did this. We are uh, the global message I was uh, I was skipping. Let's add this quickly. We have alert message. So that's the global status message. Um, this should work like this. To test this, we will just go and edit, save. There's our message. So, concord we did. The last thing we want to get over is the footer. This is also already here so we just need to activate that you see there are also other um, rules prepared for example for the the portlets from plone to get them and put them somewhere in the seam but this seam in particular uh, doesn't use side panels so uh, we don't need to activate them Okay, the footer should also be there. Right now it would look like this. Now it looks a bit more fancy. One reason for that is we don't have our styles in a way, but uh, the portlets itself, the footer portlets we can configure directly in Plone. What we want to do is the default ones which are basically, if you want to stick with the copyright plone, copyright plone and things like that, or the site actions, for example, where you have the, the contact and uh, barrier-free 
accessibility uh, guides and you can also add more actions uh, to that menu so you have some menu buttons uh, down then you want to keep that but this theme doesn't have that so let's just turn it off but we need something we want to uh, have a static portlet and we go here go there take the content we want this is static for now but that's not important now you can create a template for that to have the 21 next year 20 22 but that's not really important so one thing i forgot sorry footer here's our static footer i forgot to click this we want to omit the frame of the portlet so the portlet itself in this case doesn't have like a headline or anything else this can be useful to have but uh, for now this is not what we want so now this looks already much better um this looks a bit oddier so let's fix that i think that yeah styling so we will just take this uh, as a starting point in the editor and go to our seam. Just remove this and replace this. So what we added here now is the bootstrap SCSS bootstrap good. So we have to make sure that we have bootstrap in our dev dependencies, bootstrap is there. So uh, in the node modules uh, folder, it's there. Um, you don't have to give the full path to the node modules. You just have to uh, take the path inside the node modules. The rest, um, the compiler will, will find itself. Um, uh, the reason why that is, is uh, you have these loads load path node modules is, uh, for the ZUS compiling is uh, given here. And uh, that's why this uh, can be a bit cleaner here. So then we have our basic grid definitions. This is just uh, what we also have in, in Barcelona and uh, breakpoints. Uh, we can ignore that for now. So now to fix the content, this looks a bit, um, a bit complicated, but it basically says when we have something like the, the content core, that's what we grab. So if we look at the content core, um, inside the content core, here we have a, a parent field text. So that's uh, one of the things. Um, and for now, we don't have anything uh, in there, but uh, we will see later when we use the TinyMC templates uh, to have our, our ready-made snippets. Um, um, this rule should not apply, but uh, whenever there's not a snippet like this uh, with TinyMC in, uh, so default clone content and some other uh, um, options, uh, then we want to have like this basic background and we just use uh we we define like a like a width and the the auto so that it's centered and then this uh, background fade is uh i copied directly from the from the seam uh the rounded and the p9 these are all bootstrap stuff and i used extend so that uh, we don't have to um yeah we can have the same effect like they are using in the seam without uh, um the markup having uh, to provide this. Let's just copy this and put it in. So our watcher, I've seen this and we should now see the change. We don't. Um, wasn't ready yet. Okay, so this is much better readable and uh, a good default. 
let's continue. The next thing would be if we if we look at closely at this, uh, it doesn't look exactly like our menu. So this is not uppercase and it's also here there's much more padding um so the the reason why this is there are some some extra classes here uh if we inspect that uh we have these uh these extra classes on these enough item elements so px lg4 for example and also the uh, the uppercase somewhere i don't see it yet but um it's there. Um, so what we can do, we could just fix that with plain CSS. I'm not afraid of that. I still like CSS. Um, but to have a, a quick fix, we just uh, we just do with ex extend. Uh, we just do the same um, um, as uh, our markup would already. Uh, provide uh, this kind of classes. So just take this and for our enough items, we do this extend and let's wait until this is finished here. There are some post-processing, uh, post-CSS and stuff that's taking a bit. So now our menu looks much better then let's give the portal status message also a bit more space because we're a bit short on time I will not show you the before but you saw that the status message was right under the under the menu and now it has a bit space here which looks much nicer so also the footer um the footer should have a bit margin to the top so we also put this and That's it. So this part we already did uh, right away with the portlets. Um, this is just here for the documentation. So the footer itself. Um, this is a, a bug in the current alpha here. So this is normally it should only show the page, but for some reason it shows all the other content also. So the the default page setting doesn't really work here. Um, but here we see uh, there's not much of a, of a gap. So now the gap here is a bit uh, bigger. And if we go on, on other pages, uh, they also look better. So let's continue. Um, we have our tiny MCE templates. Uh, first of all, let's go on this stop clone and start clone again, just to make sure um, that we have our configuration in clone there. And one thing we want to do now is we want to uninstall and install our add-on again. We could also use an upgrade step, but for now we don't have an upgrade step. So we uninstall and we install again. This is necessary whenever you uh, change something in the profiles. So the registry settings uh, for the tiny MCE, uh, we want to load. And uh, this way now, when I go on tiny MC, no, not on seeming, on. Um, here. Tiny MCE. 
in the future it will just be here the template to activate but uh, for now it's here and here's the list of the templates and we see our sections so the tiny mc should see the sections so let's try if that's working already if it's not working the first time after the reinstall we might need to um ah it's working so here we have a preview of what we are injecting it doesn't look exactly like the the template we want um but i just forgot something tiny mce is sometimes a bit strange when you have big blocks so do some spaces before and then insert otherwise you cannot really get under the block you inserted so now i can just click under and i insert the second block we want on the home page which is the promise let's save that and now we have our dynamic content um let's also move this so that we have the full screen size so now we have uh, our content that looks kind of nice to prove that this is actually dynamic uh, i can go here and can say drink fresh blown coffee so you can customize that and as you see it's here um fresh blown coffee worth drinking so you can adjust this also the link here um for for basic stuff this works if you want more complex uh, blocks uh, you rather go with uh, mosaic and and create uh, specific mosaic tiles um i'm planning to add this functionality also to uh to the blown cli so that you can uh just create this kind of blocks or any other kind of uh, uh, snippets uh, easily in, in a couple of minutes for for mosaic and uh, use this in in, uh, in classic ui the other way is of course um you can use volto uh, you have uh, more built-in options there and also plugins um but that's not the topic here so um yeah inserting the templates um we were just showing this for this side now um let me quickly do this also for the other sides doesn't take long so edit here we just need one template so i don't need to make the empty space the products was our list so the store was the other one where we have static content in the store we have more than one so the store was opening hours and under the opening hours again the section about so we have the opening hours we have the section about um we still have something here i don't know what this is ah um yeah we have the the empty spaces so we have to remove them uh, otherwise they get styled by our extra star sheets because these are actually not empty spaces, but P tags, empty ones. And on the home page, we should do the same. So. Okay, so we have now dynamic content created in Plone. The only thing which is still missing is the products page. Uh, for that, we will 
go back to uh well, let's do it in the in the vs code in our second terminal so we have the blown cli we are in our in our products and we create a new content type oh, we should before commit our changes so So now clone CLI is happy and doesn't complain. It's always good to yeah, make a commit uh, before you start uh, working with the clone CLI because clone CLI itself uh, also does the commit and it's better if it's clean. You can always force it to just shut up, but um, it's better to do it this way. This way you can revert uh, things you did with the clone CLI later easily because Bloom CLI will create different stuff like tests and registrations and to revert this manually, uh, this can be a lot of work. So we create uh, products or a product content type, not products. Um, description I skip for now, we will go with the Python, not the XML version. We can leave this container, but uh, we, just need item, so we don't need like folderish uh, things. Um, we keep the globally ed uh, edible um, because we want to add this in the store folder. Uh, we disable the, I oh, know this is still yes. And the next is we disable that, uh, activate uh, default behaviors. This are the, categorization and uh, related items and all these fields you know uh, from standard clone but for he here in this case we don't want them so we uh, say first keep it keep it deactivated we will activate uh, two of them in the next steps so here you have to all the stuff again so now let's see what we have. Um, not in the same folder, but we have a content folder now. So Plunsia I creates for everything you create like views or uh, behaviors and viewlets, usually different folders and you will find them. So we have a product here. This XML file is when you want to uh, create through the web your, your schema fields and then download it here. We can just delete it because we said we want to go with the Python version. And here in this Python version, um, this is just example stuff. I will just delete it. And if you have installed uh, clone snippets uh, vis visual code extension, you can just write clone. And the first thing we want to create is an image field. So, and we call this photo. The rest we can just keep like it is with only can also adjust this, delete stuff. Uh, we see here right away there's uh, there's still some issues. So as the the node says, we have to make sure that uh, named file is uh, activated, and also we have to make sure that uh, message factory this uh, underline is loaded. Um, let's clean this up a bit. Put uh, Deactivated stuff here. And do an ISOT. This looks much better. We can also do a format content, which does black in this case. 
uh, black is a great thing and uh, also the testing relays on on black later so black will auto format your python code um, so that it looks nice and has the same rules for everybody so this would be one field uh, we need another field which would be again plone and then we want the rich text field field um, we just call it text that's it um oh, we could leave it like that so this is what we did we put this field the text field ah we forgot to fix the import so here again we have to make sure that the rich text field is actually imported um because this is common um they are already here you just have to uncomment them most of them not not all of them but uh they are there so that it's easier for you to to use this okay that's it we clean it up here you see how it looks when you're done the next thing would be to adjust the fdi settings so under profiles default types you will find the products xml this is the product name you have some settings uh, for the product itself also like this global allow uh, these settings are all uh, made here but what is interesting for us is this so we want to activate the basic and the uh, name from title behavior basic basically gives gives us the title and the description field and name from title uses the title field to uh, automatically creates the short name from the title when we filled in the title so this is very useful that's why we use this the rest some of them also belong to the as by standard activate so if you uh, don't uh, say no to the question to the default behaviors you will have some more uh, activate but for now this should be should be it so um we will just restart clone and uninstall install our add-on so let's just do that Add-ons, uninstall, install, home. Now we go to our products and don't need this anymore. Let's see, we have a product here. Now we can create a product, the name of the product. Oh no. Let's see. Fresh coffee is the name of the product. So of drinking. Then we have these pictures. Here they are in the in the assets, so you can just um choose them but you could of course use uh, different pictures from from some websites whatever you want this is the dynamic part so uh, whatever you want you can put in this is the text oh wait we were ah, now we are talking i was on the wrong page so it's coffee and tea and this is the description and the picture we have already in and this is the text so now we are going so let's do the next one um, product so this is
the name or the title. This is our description. This is our text. And that's the product too. Save it. So we see the picture, what we don't see here, and the, the text is also here. Uh, what we don't see here is the title and the description. That's because we are only uh, pulling by default uh, the content core and the title and description are not part of that. But we don't need that because we will um, use it in a different way. We will see that shortly. So the last product, it's this. That the third product photo and the last text. Of course, the text can be formatted, but this is not needed for now. So if we go on products now, let's uh, edit our collection. Now we want to say, we want to show a specific type and the type is product. Here we have the preview already. We want to sort them by order and folder so that we, when we change the order in the, in the products folder, um, they would show in a different order. Um, and I think that's all that we need here. So now we see we have already the products in the right order. The only thing now is they don't look right. So to fix that, we have to do the last step in our, in our road trip. We are creating a view. So we're using clone CLI. Let's stop this for now, but also do this in the other way. Again, git at git commit. So now we want a Python class. We want to call this products view. Um, we could choose your default view. This makes sense when you create a view for a content type, for example, because this gives you some nice shortcuts to show the content. But uh, in our case, we will replace it anyway, so we can stick with the default. The rest, we also keep the defaults. So we want a template and we also don't change the name of the view and the template, but you could. Back to the editor, reload. So now we have a views folder. The views folder has a template, has a Python class and has our configure.xml where we register the um, the view. One thing we have to change here is we have to replace the, the folderish with the collection. So if you want to create a view for a folder, nothing to change here, but you can put any other marker interface here so that it's uh, under this name, it's only uh, available for, for this kind of project. If you want the view available on any context, you just uh, put an asterisk and uh, or wildcard, and that should do the trick too. So the next thing will be, we are creating a file in the types folder for the collection XML. So we go on files, default types. 
so far there's only the products now we create a collection XML and we fill in this this is a much shorter FTI because we only want to adjust one part and that um, if you look here, for example, in the products, uh, we also will find like uh, the behaviors and like view methods. And this is like view. Huh? And in the collection, the collection already has some. That's why we put the perch false here. But we, we want to add another view method so that our view is in the, in the list of selectable views for our collection. That's what this does. So this is the template for our view. Um, let's copy it like this, uh, just to mention, this is basically um, re re filling the content core uh, area. Um, it's iterating over the results of the collection. And then item is our item in each iteration. So we will fill in the description here. We will fill in the title here. We uh, create the image path here and use the, the large scale from the image. And the same we do here again. The reason why we do that is when you look at the blocks, they are alternating. So it's like this combination. And then you have uh, uh, like even an odd variance. Uh, That's why we make it simple and we uh, just do this. So let's just replace the whole thing with what we had there. So we have one thing here, here's a condition. We use the repeat item uh, so when when this is not called item but something else, the, this would be different here. But the last thing is uh, um, to say, okay, when this item is an even or odd item, then uh, do this. So in this case, if it's like the first, then this will get. And if it's the second, then it's even, then uh, this part only uh, happens. So we only in, in inject uh, uh, at a time one section, but it's either one or the other. So one last check here. Here's the, the Python uh, thing we have to adjust. That's the last thing. So if you look at the Python code, by default, it's our browser view. So we will now load the collection view because we want to basically use the collection view just with a different template. The rest stays the same. So um, this stays the same. Uh, we need to delete this because we don't use it anymore. And that's basically it. Oh no, on the wrong terminal here. So we want to start again, clone. Since we changed uh, stuff in the profiles folder, Again, what we need to do is uninstall, install our add-on. Or when you have public stuff, then you should write an upgrade step. Clone CLI, can you also help with that? So on the products, we should now have a products view here. And now that we switch that, we have our content and it looks exactly like we want. So I would say not bad. 
for the first taste. Um, that brings us to the end uh, of the official part. Uh, I can stop my screen sharing or you can just join and ask questions also to Stefan. I think Stefan is still around, I hope. Well, I'm not sure. Let me check if you... Any questions from your side so far? Don't be so silent. Sorry for the rush, uh, but it uh, was a lot of <laughs> uh, steps to, to go through. But uh, yeah, we have a bit of time left. Uh, if you have any any questions to to clarify, uh, we can we can go over that. Yeah, one thing I can add. Is right now we have in the seam in the rules. A rule. Which will. Basically disable. Require JS. You might ask why disable require JS, because in the current alpha it's still there, so the the resource registry is still working like in Plone five, which would break uh, things like the index HTML. So you cannot just have like simple JavaScript included. Uh, you would get this undefined, defined nasty errors from require JS. Uh, this rule will basically inject oh no no this one this one uh will inject like this at the very end of the of the header and uh, this will disable require js so that when in later code like in the in the body of uh of the html file you use uh, plain simple javascript um it's independent from from chess so there's no problem there um, but this will go uh, so in the final release of clone 6 uh, this will not be needed anymore because there's no require JS so nobody can shoot you in the food um, but for now it's there um, it's still there yeah we will probably make some small uh, adjustments uh, after the the trainings but uh, it's mainly uh, workable like this. If you have any questions, you can, uh, as I said, uh, reach us on, on Discord anytime or on communityplone.org, ask questions. Also, all the Bob templates uh, in for the Plone CLI uses, um, they're not set in stone. So if you have wishes or ideas to make things better. We have some, uh, some people already contributing to that. Um, so this is uh, growing step by step. Yeah, you will find the code of this seam also already in the collective. So if you search there for Plone Seam Business Casual 21, uh, you will find, uh, yeah, the seam. It's, the same steps I, I did here. So you can uh, inspect that in case you have any trouble with uh, with your current setup and uh, couldn't follow uh, with the pace we, we made, um, then you can just inspect that and uh, 
see what's what's wrong or or just use this as an as an inspiration um of course seems i usually get more complex but um this really depends on on your needs okay if nobody of you has any further questions then i would just no need to yeah. 